What makes public health so controversial? A uh, very good question. Uh, when we look at the basic insight of public health, it is for the people to protect the people from things that may not always necessarily go right. So whether it be uh, monitoring food, uh, whether it be monitoring disease, uh, public health is based on science. And so it's the good science that people look at as what we try to decipher, what we try to determine is what is a driving indicator uh, for public health. At the same time, that is what makes it very controversial because when the government looks at what is good for the people, what is for the best common good of the people, sometimes the people push back because they believe that their individual liberty trumps government intrusion or government intervention. So how does public health balance that seesaw? Well, it's a very delicate balance between delivery and prevention and, and promoting programs that encourage and incorporate good health versus maintaining that person's individual liberty to choose and to move and to be free. But as we know, public health is based on science. And so no matter where we have the science, we'll always have this pushback from those who may not necessarily believe in the science of public health. They'll tell you that, no, it's too good to be true. No, they'll tell you that these numbers can't be correct because they don't fit within this mode or model of what I assume to be correct. And so here we have the greatest uh, part of this controversy is how do we manage and balance science and politics. That is often what makes uh, public health controversial. <coughs> when we look at, uh, for example, e-cigarettes, uh, we know that the Surgeon General through the United States Public Health Service says that cigarettes are harmful to your health. They can cause deformities in, in pregnant women, they can cause cancer, but there was a time where there was no warning label on the cigarettes. And so the cigarette industry was very much against having those warning labels on cigarettes. But at the end of the day, the public's individual health was much more important than the economic impact that it would have had if someone decided to not smoke or if they continued to smoke. So that Surgeon's General was an advisory that if you do this, this might happen. So similar to wearing a seatbelt, there was a time where seatbelts didn't uh, exist in cause or we didn't have the three point restraint system that we have today. We only had lap belts. Back then, wearing seatbelts were not mandatory. So yes, there was a time where people started getting into more accidents. We started driving at higher speeds. People started dying from accidents. And so what prevented those accidents or what could prevent death, it doesn't mean that it absolves death, but the wearing of seat belts helped uh, manufacture greater health if there was an accident to save lives. And so this is where we have this rub. Where do we save lives versus intruding in your personal, uh, infringing on your personal rights or on your personal liberties? This is what makes public health so controversial. Clean air, clean water, safe food to drink. You know, it's almost like holding up, you know, uh, a, a law in stone and just breaking it because that's what public health looks at. It looks at these preventable diseases. It looks at things that can be mitigated and we try to find ways to make it better. However, whenever you have science and politics, it's like oil and water. They do not mix. Sometimes they do and they get it right. Sometimes they can't come together and they get it all wrong. And so we often attack science 
because we think that the science is what's leading us down the rabbit hole. But in essence, science is more like a net, especially when it comes to public health. It's a net that we're casting out, hoping to catch as many people as possible to save as many people as possible from preventable, from preventable diseases. So you take, for example, polio, smallpox, measles, mumps, chickenpox, rubella. All of these things would have killed people back in the day. They were killers. But today, most of these diseases are not only preventable, but you often do not hear about them because of immunizations. Immunizations were, was probably, and I still hold it to be, one of the greatest discoveries in the science and data collection of public health. Countless numbers of people's lives have been saved because of these vaccinations, because of these immunization programs, not just here in the United States, it has saved people around the world. And even to this day, we are still going out on that mission of public health to save lives through these immunization programs. So we have health threats everywhere. And most of these health threats do have an economic impact. So let's not talk, you know, yesteryear. Let's talk today, COVID-19. What has been the economic impact of this disease millions of people out of work thousands of people losing their jobs St uh, a, a myriad number of businesses that will not exist post covid because financially economically they could not weather this storm and so the biggest push that you hear is we got to get people back to work we have to keep our businesses open. We have to be able to service our people. But conversely, what happens when an epidemic, or in this case, a pandemic runs wild and it kills your people so that your people can't work, so that your people can't spend money? Then what happens when we reach those situations? This is where we have the fight the government can't tell me what to do. You are part of this evil empire that wants to take our money, steal our rights away, and, and really do things to us that we seem to find constitutionally uh, in a constitutional deficit. But at the same time, we have to understand that this is public health for the good of the people, by the people, for the people. And so these rules and things that are being put into place, yes, do they hurt? They hurt. We all feel that hurt. But at the end of the day, the controversy is not the, the, the plight of trying to get better. It's a matter of having the right plan in place to get better and to do better and to be better. That is where we don't really have a, a common ground where we do not have a, a common solution. Uh, we do not have a, 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 a steady pace uh, to, to trying to rectify this problem. And so we are very sensitive to individual liberty. It's almost like I'm talking and we say, well, you can't say that. You know, well, you do have irresponsible signs. You do have, it's irresponsible because the people try to take it to fit their own motives. Public health is very data driven. And so the controversies arise when we look at what is the cost of public health versus putting a restriction on an individual and to put a restriction on an individual's behavior to protect the public's health. So you have a political view from it. You have a science view from it. You have a personal view of it. You have a governmental response to it. You have a public health response to it. You have a whole lot of responses to these common problems, but yet you don't find a common solution. So yes, these are things that do sit there and make you say, hmm, 
how do we figure out which way to go? And so this is why when we look at advocacy for health, advocacy for health has to cover a lot of windows because we all have different morals. We all have different beliefs. We all have different ways we view the world and we view ourselves. We all have different ways in how we view our neighbors and how we view our environment and how we view our government and how we view our citizen, our citizens and our neighbors. We all see things not always in black and white, but sometimes we see things very much in shades of gray. And so we have to figure out how do we take that shade of gray and shade it gray so that everyone can enjoy it, so that everyone can feel involved and not feel like they're being interfered with in this overall system and concept of health intertwined with government. And so this is what we see. This is going to be our battle because what happens is you start to produce labels when you're trying to prove a point. But public health really doesn't have a label, but yet it always is labeled. Oh, it's a social movement. Oh, it's a social experiment. Oh, everyone in public health must be socialist. So it automatically generates controversy. But I look at it in this lens. Public health promotes good social change. Not, not being a, a, a socialist from a political standpoint, but doing good for the community. And so that is why a lot of things become controversial. Alcohol, e-cigarettes, COVID, immunizations, you name it. Because we're not all the same. And so public health realizes that we're not all the same. And we try to find the best way to, to integrate all of these concepts so that it's not just health for one, but that it is health for all. And so when we look at those measures and we look at those countermeasures and we look at all of these little pieces of a puzzle that come together, the end of the day, the picture is us in good health, us maintaining whatever system of, of reliance that we need to maintain our health. And each one of those pieces represent people, people who have to work together and come together in order to make that picture look great. But every day it's a blank slate and public health is out there on that front line holding that line so that we eat well, sleep well, drink well, breathe well. And so it is the, the overarching battle, but it is one that covers so many different areas. It can't help but become controversial because Everyone's going to have an opinion about how their health should go and how their health should be. And so it is the riddle of the ages. You know, how do we continue to maintain good health? Well, that's why we have great prevention programs. And so for a lot of these different programs, they will touch different people. They will touch people in different ways. But at the end of the day, our focus is always on the health of the people. Controversial and all. The controversy helps us think. It helps us make sure that we're still maintaining the goal and the mission of public health to serve people and to make sure that is always first and foremost in our minds. So I hope that uh, this was a little bit educational for you on, on why sometimes public health can be controversial. And uh, I look forward to sharing uh, another uh, talk with you soon.